some sets, Mike. Yeah, I'd love to play some sets, man. I'm all about it. Uh, I like a lot of cool. So I jump ship in Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> can Allow we open, Tony, can we open the window so we don't get that echo? Yeah. Please. Big hit of the llama. Yep. So, um... Oh, that's good on Mark. When we uh, first kind of start this, we'll, yeah. we'll just kind of go in with Northwest Cup. Yeah. Uh, that just happened at Sam's. Um, uh, I got notes on all the single matches too. That uh, that crossover from the eight to the nine when you were playing um, um, uh, Louis seven. Uh, well, first that seven ball, but that you crossed over the eight and came back over on the nine. I was like, oh, I wonder how you kind of do this. And, and, I crossed and, you, it. and you just drilled it. Yeah, and, yeah. That was, and you hit it right into the heart of the pocket. Because those pockets were, and we're going to talk about Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Is ready? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so episode four. Uh, my name is Mark Evans. Uh, we uh, Savage Streaming Productions. Uh, I'm here with Matthew McKinnis, captain of the Northwest Cup. Michael Dashman, who was playing in the Northwest Cup just recently at Sam's. Uh, there was a great following, a lot of people watching, um, thousands of views uh, over the last two weeks on it. I was yeah. watching it last yeah. night, uh, recapping it again. So I think 21,000 people, 21,000 really? views, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, it was wow. big. I mean, uh, I, I know I was playing in a tournament, I was watching it, um, the, the Northwest Cup. I think a lot of people were, yeah, as it got towards the end, it was so tight. Yeah. Uh, I, I really think that as it got towards the end, we really picked up a lot of viewers just from the way it ended, you know, I mean, well, it was really course. exciting, you know, yeah. I had, uh, I know yeah. I had people that stopped by just to kind of say hi, that stayed till midnight, sitting on the top of the steps to watch that we're not planning on doing that, but it was, it was a close race, it was really exciting, it was obviously really intense. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think you could ask for a better outcome. And, <laughs> oh, yeah, you uh, could. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's been on the But, well, obviously, yeah. I mean, me and Oregon. But I know it's Yeah, yeah. But, um, as far as the excitement for the oh, cup, it, it did the cup good. I know, I agree. Oh, yeah, I'm sure everyone agrees with that. It was well, good for the cup. Yeah. Oh, well, and Matt, I know that you worked really hard on promoting. Um, uh, I mean, I just run a little Saturday tournament and, I, and promoting that, but promoting something like this on a grander scale where you have a stage to stay with, uh, how much of a challenge is that to get everybody? Well, it's, it's challenging to get all the pool players on the same page in terms of dates and, and scheduling. It's just difficult. There's a lot of events. The guys are active in our pool community, and as people probably noticed, there's been quite an uptick. There's more stuff going on than there has been in years past. So that in and of itself is just a, a challenge. Sure. Um, but the exciting thing for me is now I have more time to dedicate towards the future promotion because it really was challenging for me working a full-time job and trying to get this up off the ground. <coughs> Unfortunately, with help of many other people, I mean, Bigger and Billiards, for those that don't know, is is a combination of, of people. It's Mike, Mike D is a part of Bigger and Billiards, Dan Wolf, uh, myself, Jesse Johnson, all had kind of volunteered many hours to make stuff like this happen. So it, it was a challenge, but it was well worth it, especially with the outcome it being such a tight match. And uh, I was joking with Ed Slade saying, hey, you can't go hill hill because I'll have a heart attack. If it goes hill hill, like it'll be too stressful. But um, as it turned out, it was it was pretty dramatic and it was a lot of fun to be there. It was really cool to see it. Well, and uh, you're talking about all those names that like Dan Wolf, um, I, I know Dan really well, great. Great dude. Mm -hmm. Really like of the Fargument. Yeah, 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 people yeah. aren't aware who Dan Wolf is. He's yeah. who does the Fargument. And he's a uh, great dude. Um, all of those guys uh, together. Well, and Team Washington, um, I mean, they were no slouches. Uh, let me oh, see. Yeah, Stephen Weekly. Fargo was six ninety nine. Uh, he's out of Spokane, Dan Louie, which, I mean, everybody kind of knows Dan. Uh, uh, he used to be on the Pro Circuit, um, uh, out of Mercer Island, 688, James to be, uh, James to be, another 688 out of Kamona Island, off of Kamona Island, Damien, 
Hey, man, everybody knows right. that he's a beast. 706, uh, Snowmiss, uh, 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 Kim Jones, mm-hmm. um, who was playing really good for never playing on that table. She took Krista Hill, huh? Yeah. She's, she's yeah. playing great. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. she's been on the women's pro tour before. Yeah, I mean, she, she plays great. Well, and I was watching her playing uh, against Krista, and I was, man, and she was doing good safety. She was locking it. Yeah, in. I had an opportunity to speak with her outside after the match, and she... Oh boy, that was it. Was a real challenge keeping um, things at bay for her. She was talking about the fact that she was doing everything she could to try and throw him off and try and keep hiding the cue ball at times that she knew she didn't feel comfortable running out, and she made it him sweat. I mean, she did take it right to Hill Hill. Smart person. Darn near got it, um, but she played really well. She played really well. It was fun to watch that. Well, and she's a 590 as well, um, and then Tim uh, Tidwell, who's a 651 out of Linwood, um, man, he was playing really Tim solid is tough. for not He's playing tough. on that table. Tough competitor. Because that table, I mean, there wasn't a lot of clearance runs, and you'd think with those high parlors, there would be more breaking runs. Right. Uh, there. Well, well, Tim's a one pocket pop. player. He's a nine foot player. He has been since we were since yeah, I yeah. was a kid. Since I was seventeen years old, right? Eighteen years old. He's been around playing on big tables. Uh, he plays. He plays great. Yeah. Well, and not that I'm sure everybody kind of knows because especially here in Oregon. But I know that we have viewers watching up in uh, Washington too. Um, but uh, so Steve Lingenbach was on his part of those at 706, I think. 706, yeah. Yeah. Uh, currently right now. Uh, Matt Horner, um, MVP, okay. yeah, uh, great. Yeah, 688. Really um, and then Dijmin, uh 673. Uh, Byers, 708. Uh, Tualatin, uh, Liz Cole, 603. And I mean, she... She played really strong. She has one of the few shots I still remember that oh, jump, that bank, jump bank. Yeah, she oh, yeah, did. yeah, yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then ran out too, and which is hard to do. That's hard to make that shot and then run out. By the well, way, there weren't so that. Out. There weren't a lot of run out. I mean, right. there, there were very few break and runs, and I think you know people. There were some talk about the table, but it had more to do with the event and the atmosphere. I mean, after seeing it for two years in a row now. There is an atmosphere that is very special that takes place when you're representing your state. That's a different type of pressure. And they, you know, some of the players downplayed it a little bit this year, but the, I think it was because the crowd, the live crowd was a lot different. It wasn't as many people on hand. They, were, they got real rambunctious. I was really happy that Marquez and Dave Canova, some other people kind of picked up yeah. the enthusiasm in day two and made it more of the atmosphere yeah. I was hoping for. Um, but it was a little bit different in that regard in terms of there were more people on site at 15th Street, but the pressure was the same. You could yeah. feel it in the air. These guys were, were feeling it, and um, you could see it in the play. I mean, any other time, those runouts, you'd see a lot more break and runs. You'd see a lot more consistency. There was a lot of misses there that were just flat-out nerves. You know, they were the pressure of the situation. And, you know, I, 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 it makes me feel good. I can see these guys come back down to earth a little bit. You know, right, it, right. it's great players that, yeah, yeah, they can feel the heat too. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I think uh, there's some of the tighter pockets at Sam. For sure. But I mean, honestly, gold crowns are, in situations like that, are kind of notoriously known for having big pockets. So, I mean, yeah. the table we played on didn't have big pockets. I think that's the worst you could say about it. it was, yeah. They're tough, but I mean, they were not particularly small. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough action. It is tough action. Right. And, and we feel it. It is. It's, well, it's I know they were, well, they were talking about, okay, well, they cleaned the ball, so now the balls are kind of sliding, uh, more friendly to slide into the pockets and stuff. But, I mean, that table four at Sam's, where they play like, all the one pocket at, uh, I play on that table. <coughs> and, man, it, but there's got to be some nerves. I mean, <laughs> yeah, not yeah, right. you're representing <laughs> Oregon, but you're also playing for three thousand dollars because yeah, uh, they right. were talking about that quite a bit in the last yeah. single match. It's like now well, we're think representing. Oregon. Another factor that you can't ignore is the fact, and I know that um, there were some players that were that were flustered in the way that it's a really long, grueling day. It's a long day, especially there are times the way that the blind draw works out, where you're sitting maybe for six, seven hours. And then suddenly you're going to step up to the plate and perform at a high level in a pressure situation. It's tough. If you think you sit it's a long tough. time at league, you should yeah. try this. <laughs> you think, you think <laughs> I played one match. I played one match the second day. 
I yeah. played free the first day. That's cool. The second day, I had to wait and wait and wait and wait and yeah. wait and wait and play one match and very tough. and try and play good. And yeah, I mean, but in my, you signed up in my view, that's kind of what makes it part of a special of event. Is it's grueling. You know, there is a lot of pressure. You're representing your state, but um, you know, it's it's what makes it unique and fun. I think. It's fun, to, fun yeah. to watch for sure. It's stressful as heck to be a part of it. I've, that's actually one of the announcements I'd like to make is that uh, I'm definitely stepping down as, as captain. I can't take the heat anymore, right. man. It's a little right. too much for me. But Mike, Mike D here will be our captain for next year. Awesome. Um, and I know yeah, I have yeah, word that excited. Ed Slade will, in fact, be the captain for Team Washington next year. So oh, he'll, great. Be, he'll be captain. So that's, that's one thing I want to do today. That's a great guy. You know, he is. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think you two being able to work it, uh, work it out. Because then, obviously, the next one is going up to Washington. Yep, right. we'll be right. back right. at exactly. 15th exactly. Street. As a matter of fact, kind of have a soft oh, date awesome. for 2020. Um, September 27th that or 26 27th that's the weekend we're targeting it's not a firm date yet but it looks like it's definitely going to be at 15th Street uh, mm. Grill and so love having them as a host they were super gracious last year really looking forward to oh, this next year better, yeah so. well I think the owner um oh man I forgot their names now um uh, Mike Mike yeah. and his wife is. Uh, oh, you could have just stopped it. No, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 uh, Sophia. If Tran I can access <laughs> Facebook right now, <laughs> I, can right. Get it. I have it on my phone. Anyway, yes. I was talking to Sophia. Yes. Tran. Oh, it's the 15th Street. Yes. Um, and I was telling her like, "Oh man, we should do a tournament up there." Because I know Jesse Berman does a lot of tournaments up there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, "Shout no, out to Jesse." And David yeah, Robert. I mean, he does awesome. a lot for the whole community. Yeah. But uh, I think that's a great venue because. They had quite a few people out there when the last Northwest Cup was. Oh uh, yeah, they, was, a lot of people yeah. showed up. You know now now during ours, I think to be fair, the Blazers. I'm not a sports guy. The Blazers were doing something, and there it was, was a Blazers big deal. Playoff. It was a there big game. Somebody was that. Was, if there was, was a lot of thank you. So. Yeah. so a lot of people were home watching the Blazers and yeah. watching. That's why the views, I believe, were so high on this one. I people were so. home watching it on tablets or Roku on a different device. Hey, yeah, but they were I'm, watching the game. I'm still calling out Oregon Pool fans because I know we can do better. I still am. I, I mean, the truth of the matter is, <laughs> I, I also think you want to you you have to give credit to the Railbirds and Kevin and Sherry because uh. they're is so good the quality is so good that it's real easy to stay at home next to your refrigerator and just be like hey I'm just gonna kick it here and watch watch it on TV at yeah. home uh, um, whereas the up there the other thing too a big difference was and I didn't want to ask this of Val and thank you Valerie if you're watching for, for being such a great host yeah. um, Sam's is awesome but one of the things that Mike did up at 15th Street was he literally rearranged his room he moved pool tables set up like 40 chairs so there was all this like you know special seating for the event that at times was full sometimes it wasn't sometimes it was you had fluctuations throughout the day yeah um, but they had it was a lot more viewable quote unquote from a spectator standpoint in the room up we there. were almost on a stage uh, they yeah. really separated that table yeah. from everything and then had seating in rows around that table I was watching the pressure was crazy on that one because yeah. i mean <laughs> so you look out and go wow you yeah. know it's ugh. i was yeah. watching some of it and i could hear the washington people like it felt like the Moscone Cup. Like yeah. either they were booing or they were yeah, like, yeah. It was, yeah. was a great location yeah. for it. It really was. Like, what, well, kids? Was, I saw kids running around in the yeah. background too. Uh, yeah. like, it's all ages there until I think 9 p.m. or something like that. Awesome. There's the restaurant attached to it. Yeah, yeah I got to give, I mean, again, Sam's was great. I got to give a lot of props to 15th oh, for Street sure. just as a venue. It's, right. it's a different atmosphere in terms of what, what you were, you know, what you do. the best view in the house, I think, is on the stairwell there where you're looking down on the table. It's not a lot of place for people to, to sit and whatnot but um and uh, speaking of that you know in the future i do think i'm really excited for those that don't know there is a new room opening up in beaverton in august called legends and i couldn't be more excited about it i mean that's something that all pool players should be stoked about we're going to have a real legit big open area room I, I got to see it i had the opportunity to meet uh, michael bean on saturday and man is it we are so fortunate i cannot wait for that to open up so that's going to give us the opportunity to Potentially have another venue for right. for big events in the future. I um, um, I think that's gonna be awesome oh, for yeah. Oregon Bowl. Oh, absolutely, I mean, it's gonna make oh, it's we, we can have real big tournaments. I mean, serious tournaments. Maybe even get some pearl events going in there. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I heard that there's gonna be some nine footers in there. Yep, bar boxes. Um, so I, it's gonna be pretty exciting because there isn't a lot going on uh in 
on that side of town. Um, I but guess somebody's asking, asking if that's, that's where the hot shots location. location. No, my understanding is no, it's, it's not. not. That's it's been everybody's first stop. It's about a mile it's down the street. Yeah. It's, uh, it's it's also close though, before you get to Shoals Ferry. Yeah. It used to be a um, an arcade, kids arcade slash bar pizza joint. I forget the name of it, but no, it's not the exact same location. Very close. It's, it's so, so close, close though. It's, it's what yeah. everybody's thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and also, so um, Matt was kind of talking uh, about. Uh, who owns Sam's? Um, Sam's Village right. on 42nd in San Diego. If you haven't checked it out, some great food, mm, great definitely. place to play pool. Um, they have gold crowns, they have bar boxes, two bar boxes, a snooker table. And Val does a lot for the pool community. Um, she adds money straight out of the till, cash. Um, so they've got the big once a month tournament there. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the only month nine month foot tournament in Oregon. Best tournament, yeah. Yeah. I, think I think it's one of the best, the best tournaments here in Oregon. Oregon. Uh, um, the last right. Sunday of, uh, right. of every month at right. Sam's right. Ten Ball. Um, if, if you, you haven't, haven't played, played in that tournament, you should come check it out. It, uh, it will test uh, your pool game, test your heart, definitely, because you have so many Fargos out there from 700s all the way down to. 450s right, right, right competing right. so um uh kind of getting back to this so clipper also mm -hmm. on the team i was watching Good. so i i so obviously the scotch doubles uh and the first day was big because it kind of set the tone for the second day because it, it, when it was said and done it was tied so you the singles events had to um, come into play so um, and you guys can help me out. So uh, the first game was Steve uh, versus uh, Kim. Um, Steve made a cut. The eight ball was here. The nine ball was in front of it. It didn't even seem like Steve could see. It. He he could see like an eighth right. of right. the eight. Right. Cut it in. Came around perfect shape on the nine. Steve won that one um, because it was a race to nine. Right, right. Um, right. So there's one. And then you played Dan Louie. Um, and it, have you been working on your break? Because you made three balls on the break on the second. I, well, I've been, just I was trying to play. Rack. I don't have a nine foot setup right now. So I was going to Sam's two or three days a week and playing. And I was just doing my standard break, my nine foot nine ball break. But I had been making sure it was where I needed it to be for the event. And it, it was, it held up through the event. I was real proud of it. Uh, my cue ball stuck. Yeah. Well, and you hit a seven ball, you, I mean, just hit it into the part, you cut back over um, and then you have perfect shape on the night and you actually cleared that table. Yeah, I don't. I haven't watched it, was, it since I played, Mark. Oh, and I'll tell you what. I watched you, it about three o'clock this morning, just and honest, I was like, "Just honestly, when I sat down after those shots, if you had asked me a question, I probably wouldn't have been able to remember what I just did." So, especially this far from them, yeah, I don't really. I'd have to be watching it to really talk about. Well, it. I can I'm tell sorry. You, I just you can tell it this me. Morning. Well, that sounds pretty uh, good. Man. I was like, "Okay, he just yeah. shattered that rag, made three balls on the break." They were even talking about. They're like, "Man." Weather break yeah. and you just shattered it. You clearanced it. Yeah. That made it two zero, um, and you ran out. Then Chris uh, versus Damien. Um, Damien broke dry, right. and then uh, you remember too, huh? James it's Devine. Like a new After story. That, to no, me. well, it was it was as a Chris captain. <laughs> yeah, Chris <laughs> ran out. Well, no, the thing that the thing that really got me was we had a little bit of a controversy there at that point because we got out of sequence with the breaking order. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah, the yeah, end yeah. we're talking. This is the very last single well, I remember race. The end. And so yeah, when I Ed and I around. met out at the table, we basically came to the agreement that okay, since this we're not taking games off the score sheet, the thing that made the most sense was to continue but award them two in a row, which from my standpoint, like it was a tough pill to swallow because here I am giving Damien and James their two strongest players arguably the break two in a row I'm like oh that's kind of scary but then out of nowhere they broke dry yeah and Chris Chris ran out and I forget big smooth I yeah mean, big, oh man but so that and then that was kind of like this big momentum swing and uh, with his run being I think only one of two breaking runs in that final set the other one was Cliff Maxson, and I gotta give mad props to Cliff because we're gonna his, get to that one. Because being that's his good first Lord. Northwest Cup, yeah. when we needed it the most, the guy steps up and does an incredible break and run. I mean, it was it was spectacular. 
Yeah. And he didn't even really look nervous in that nah, shot. It looked like he table, was just man. hanging out, having a couple of drinks, <laughs> yeah. playing some pool. And, cool as uh, a cool Yeah. Uh, so Matt Horner uh, against James it. DeVee. Uh, James got that one, but um, Matt, uh, Matt made this long, I mean, and that on a nine foot table with four and a quarter inch pockets. He made, he just made this long one that it, it had some safety battles in there. Uh, Matt Horner or uh, James DeVee got the best of that one. Um, they were doing a little safety battle on the two ball. Um, mm -hmm. James came out kind of ahead on that one. Clipper uh, against uh, Tim Tidwell. Uh, Tim Tweedle. 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 Excuse me. Thank you. It's all good. Um, Didn't let Tim get to the table. Good. So Tim that was the him. break and run. That and break and run. Um, Clipper had to make this long one ball jacked over another ball. Yeah, right. yeah, he yeah, jacked yeah. up over a ball yeah. and just hit it in. We're all kind of watching it. And Didn't think it, it was going to drop. Yeah. 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 It, it kind of rattled a little bit, yeah. went mm -hmm. in, and then he just went on cleaned about his up business that, too, yeah. and cleaned it up yeah um, and you didn't see too many break runs like you no like i said i think you know i can remember the day one i think uh james dv had a break and run um I, did you have a break and run the first? he might have had a break and run the first day there was only you could count on one hand basically yeah which was in in, in some aspects kind of surprising but then when you go back and if you looked at last year it wasn't that many break and runs last year either it's it's the event it's the pressure it's the um, it's just the format. I it's think the it's the same just, when we went to Vegas. It changes the, everything. Yeah, yeah heck, even, you know, Mitch Ellerman was like the challenge. only guy yeah. that was having a bunch of break and runs, and even he blew some nine ball shots that were kind of unexpected, you know? Well, and since you were playing in it, I mean, we're all kind of watching it, and uh, obviously Matt being team captain is feeling nerves, so you were playing in it. And for a lot of people that play in tournaments or league or whatever, or playing cash games, we all kind of get into that mode where it really matters the most. Um, your nerves, your backhand is shaking, oh, wow. your breathing starts kind of going off. We've all been there that are pool players. What do you kind of do to kind of get yourself in the mindset to make that shot? Well, I, I, I mean, when I'm, I, I years ago started developing a thing where I count. Uh, I count from the time I stand up till the time I go back and sit down. And sometimes if I'm having too much negative thoughts or distracted thoughts while I'm playing, I'll, I'll count while I'm sitting too. Uh, the counting, I change it. I change the pace and the tempo depending on what I'm doing on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, but I count the whole time. It's my way of, of kind of tuning out, of yeah. clearing my mind so I can just focus on what I'm doing. Uh, you could, it's, it's, that's in the book, uh, Pleasure of Small Motions. It's stolen from that. Uh, he recommends uh, singing a song in your head, you know, anything that works for you. Personally, I count. Uh, the other thing is uh, when you're nervous, your right hand, your back hand tightens up a lot. Mm. That's a good thing to remind yourself not to do. Um, and it's good to remind yourself to look at the cue ball and to look at the object ball. Uh, those are three little, the, the where to look things, those are things I try to remind myself and I count. In your like pre shot routine, uh, you're just kind of like, okay, I'm gonna breathe, keep my right hand loose, and just don't squeeze too hard with my back hand. Is yeah, one of my yeah, thoughts because right. often when you're blowing it, when you're when you're choking, when you're when you're having a hell of a time, you realize later, oh, I was gripping like a steering yeah. wheel on my mm -hmm. cue because I was nervous. That was the problem. I got a good friend that plays with his his back pinky out. Uh, you know, whatever you got to do to develop to keep a nice loose grip on that. Backhand. Hi, Pete. I wasn't, I wasn't going to call you out. That was him. Uh, you know, that's vitally important. Uh, I will times miss cue and realize I was not looking at where the tip was touching the cue ball, mm. which is ridiculous. But you, I've been doing this a while, and sometimes I actually don't look at where the tip's touching the cue ball. And yeah. that's not good, especially in pressure. You pressure need to look wise. at the, where the tip's touching the cue ball, where the cue ball you want it to touch the object ball, and don't hold too tight and count. Well, that's my advice for pressure. That's what I got. So not to put you on the hot seat, but yeah. uh, when you were playing uh, in one of your matches, and I think it was uh, against Damien, um, and you were running the rack. I mean, you made oh, some yeah. good, hard, okay. good, some right. tough shots, all right. All right. All right. and you had an angle cut on the nine. The nine... 
cut it to the left corner uh, on the foot rail. Right. And like everybody was like, okay, so we're moving on. What Oregon's going to be? And, and like, I don't think I'm going to like the end of the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. And it, right. And it rattled a little bit. And everybody was like, like did that just happen? Like, yeah. That was Michael. That well, was, that's a, What was going through? It was like, like, oh man, this that is That would have been a 6-2 Oregon. Yeah, that's, exactly. Yeah, that was that's a big just game. Missing. <laughs> I mean, that's just missing. That's just missing. You know, when, when people tell you the story about... Oh, I would have beat him, but I missed the seven ball. Well, you miss the seven ball sometimes. That's how good you are. Yeah. I would have won, except I missed the nine ball. Yeah, sometimes I miss the nine ball. I got to stop doing that. And then I'll be a 682 player. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I need to stop scratching so much. Off. You can't say, oh, I would have won, but I didn't make anything on the break. Well, if you were a 706 player, you would have made something on the break. That's a reflection of how you play. Yeah, me missing the nine. Yeah, I missed the nine. Well, That's hard being a six seventy player yeah. versus a it's, a seven twenty player, a or even a six eight. You know, even uh, James to be a little bit better than me, or uh, Cole and uh, or not Cole, but Steve and uh, uh, Chris at, at, yeah. the, at the low sevens. They're better than me, and uh, yeah, I mean that's that's where you. You find that out. Well, I, I, and I don't know, and I won't say better. Um, I, I, I will. Maybe, <laughs> I, I don't know if that's I'm fair, okay but that. yeah. because it, I mean, well, you've been a, around a long time in bowling. You played uh, some stressful situations, but like I, I think we've all that played pool, and we've all played pool in this room. And uh, Ed Slay and Scott Snyder, who joined us, they've all played in pool. Uh, we've all been there. Like, like what, what do you do, do like after that shot? Because you still had to go and play another match, right? Because some people they maybe snap their cue in half uh, or right. something like that. But what do you do to come back and because you, you had to play again? again. Yeah, I, I just, just you have to have kind of a laissez-faire attitude about it. I mean, I just yeah, sure. I memory. shake it off. Yeah. You know, I am very angry for a little bit, and I will. If I'm wearing a sweatshirt, I'm gonna have to take it off because I will get really hot every time I miss a a shot. I literally will get burning hot. I'm uh, very, very angry. <clears throat> I definitely want to throw my cue, and I have punched holes in walls and kicked holes in walls uh, when I was younger for missing shots. Uh, that, those feelings are there, and uh, and when you lay in bed at, at night trying to go to sleep, sometimes you think about that seven ball, and and that's what makes you practice and try to get better. Um, so there's that aspect, but I've also I've lost a lot and I've missed a lot of shots, and you have to be able to shake that off. You just have to. Be well, you did come back in the next round and make a really beautiful combination to beat James DeVee. So yeah, that was a big yeah, uh, turnaround. So you didn't, yeah, you didn't you gotta, struggle for two. Right. Yeah, I'm just saying. That, I mean, I don't want to say, oh, it's yeah, no yeah. big deal. Oh, it was a big deal for a couple minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. But then you got to take a breath and shake it off. Yeah. 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 That combo against James DeVee, I was scared to death, but yeah. uh, it too. looked right. I got down on it, and it looked right. And I I thought, eh. Um, it was close to the hole. I'm glad you made that hole. Uh, yeah, that was... Uh, <laughs> I was glad I made it, too. That's not a shot you want to miss. You know, that's like the guy that takes the three-pointer shot for the win. Right. If you make it, that's pretty awesome. If you miss it, people are probably going to talk about it later. Yeah. And I knew that as I'm stroking through. But right. anyway. Um, uh, and so just kind of going over some of the other... Chris Byers against uh, James Duby. Chris uh, actually won that match, and... Um, man, uh, I know for Chris, as good as he is, because I know that he works a lot and he's uh, uh, hanging off sides of buildings, cleaning windows and yeah, stuff. But, yeah. uh, good lord, he hasn't lost that stroke, it's just super smooth. <sighs> big smooth is big smooth. I mean, that uh, his fundamentals and what he can do with the cue ball is pretty special. And I think you know, it's obvious to see if, if he had the ability to dedicate all of his time to doing nothing but playing pool and. Um, I don't know. The sky's the limit for him. I think he's he's one of the most talented pool players I've ever watched. Just Fargo's um, still a seven oh eight. Yeah, I mean, really. it's limited with what you know. Literally lifestyle. It's like I, it's a game. You get in the time you 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 know you get out with the time you put in, and when you can't dedicate all your time to it, I mean that's that's what makes the pros the pros in a lot of ways. Is that's what they're doing? Is right. they're playing pool eight ten hours a day? They're going nothing but tournaments. And for guys like Steve, Damian, Chris, you know, when you're doing full-time stuff and trying to play pool on the side, you know, I think you have to understand that there's there's only so much you can do. And, but you see it when you watch Chris Byers play. That yeah. kid, it's amazing what he's capable of. And I love watching him play. I mean, it's just a and, delight. And playing a lot lately or not, I mean, I can tell you personally, 
his stroke has matured just like he has in the last couple of years. He's not hitting or popping that ball as often. Mm -hmm. He's pushing that ball a lot now, which is the sign of a pro. Mm -hmm. uh, it has matured. Playing or not, he's gotten better just because he has matured. Yeah. And then his stroke has matured. I mean, you say the same thing about Cole Gibbons. I mean, yeah. just yeah, what, what he's, the work he's put yeah. in. And that's, that's a perfect example of a guy who's put some time in. You can see what's happened with him. Yeah. And it's been really fun to watch. It's impressive. Yeah. Yeah, being uh, here from Portland, and, and I could rub shoulders with him in some tournaments. And uh, first of all, Cole is a really good person, first no, and great. foremost. He's a great humble, nice guy. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think what's special about the Northwest Cup is that most of the people that are on the Northwest Cup, I mean, they all have jobs. They all have families. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mike, you got a big family. You just moved up to the Sandy, and um, a lot of the, I think everybody on the team, uh, you know, are living stressful lives too. But then they're coming and to come play in this Northwest Cup, mm -hmm. not putting a lot of time on the table, and like, okay, here, here's a stressful situation. Right. Let's exactly. go play for three thousand dollars and represent your state. Right. Yeah. Let's go get it done. Um, and to be throwing that situation on table number four with this small pockets, I think made it even a little bit more special. For sure. Yeah. Um, so it, just kind of jumping forward. Uh, so it was all tied up 6-6. Six, six. And then um, Steve had to play Damien. Damien got the best of that one. Uh, you put that James DeVee, um, you won that one. That was a great clearance. Is that the one I comboed? Yeah, gotta help me out. Yeah, 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 I can't yeah. just say that like I'm gonna remember, man. Yes, yes, I played. I think it was a one nine combo. Yeah. Yeah. Now looking back on that, I think I was I I made it. I may have chose differently, but at the moment, I I just happened to put the you know on a combo. Sometimes you put the cue ball down and look at it just to see how you feel about it. And I instantly felt really good about it. Yeah. Uh, James scares me. <laughs> and I, I forget if it was the four was behind the eight ball or the six was behind the eight ball enough to where I thought, God, I'm going to end up hooking myself four shots from now and being really mad. I didn't just take this. And that combined with that it, it looked right. Uh, and, the you know, it I made it. Seven well, I mean, it did that look was... right. It felt right. It wasn't an easy combo. I mean, it, that it was, was kind of a little off center in the corner on the. It was the close pocket ish the to the pocket, yeah. so therefore it made it real tempting as a decision. The only thing that freaked me out as, as you know, captain looking back is how the distance involved. Well, the you one know, ball was, was on the other side. Was a big, yeah. was a lot I of knew green, that, a lot of that no one at sitting with Team Oregon was thrilled. That was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was aware of that. Yeah, yeah. But I, like I say, you know, you get down on the ball and you're thinking, oh, I'm, I'm making this. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. make it. I'm super scared of this guy. I, I'm on the one ball. We've seen two people. I mean, if we really want to talk about it, mm. we've seen two people run out in two days. Now right. I know I have ball in hand, but I've seen a lot of people dog it. I've dogged it. Thanks for you know mentioning yeah. that a minute ago. <laughs> I see Not a ball. position where I might hook myself, and I feel good about the one nine combo. There's the time yeah. limit too, so I don't have a lot of time to think about this. That clock is in your head well, too. About that. So I'm clock so I'm thinking all this yeah. stuff, and I'm like. I know I can make the one. That dude scares me. I'm about to hook myself. Ah, uh, here I go. Yeah. And, and I made it. And I'm really yeah. glad I made it. Or we would be talking about how I didn't make it. Kind of like watching a Blazer game when they let a shot go that you don't think is a wise shot. And you're like, no. And then they make it. And you're like, yes. It was right. kind of like that. that listen, like, that's how I felt too. Yeah. Well, the one was on the far side. The nine was kind it of It was awesome. very far away from the nine <laughs> and ball. Would, and, and the nine push. was actually about that far from the pocket. It yeah, was not it was in the close. jaws. No. Yeah, it wasn't. And that, pot, that table's playing tight. It's playing funny. Well, and you hit it in the heart, and uh, it, it was it looked like you were playing the percentages, playing the odds, like, okay, if I go for this, it might be a two-way kind of thing. No. The rest of the day. No, no like, I had to straight on. I could have shot it so that the cue <clears throat> ball got a little safer. But that goes back to the clock and the fact that I felt good about it. I hadn't had a chance to look at it with an off angle. Mm. And I didn't have a lot of time to screw on that. And as soon as I go off angle, maybe I'm not going to feel good about it anymore. And then it's a dumb shot if I don't feel good about it. Yeah. I only could just go straight at it and hope for the best. And hope that, again, only two people would run out. Maybe if I miss it, he's still on the one ball. Yeah. He's still got to run out. And maybe I leave him hooked. Maybe I leave him tough. That's the odds of going for it sometimes, too. You know, you either make it or leave the guy tough or leave the guy hooked 
or leave him easy. Well, three out of four of those are, are pretty decent. Yeah. Now, now a dead safety is still a dead safety. But anyway. Well, that was a great, uh, great shot. Um, no, I don't know, but it worked out. Well, we tied it up that we needed it. Well, you hit it with confidence too. Thank with you. Uh, yeah. I think they say uh, uh, hitting it like a pro. So um, because, like you were saying, if you miss, you it, you might leave them tough because the rest of the table was not right. 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 So uh, Matt Horner against uh, Steven. Uh, man, Matt played strong. He got the best of that one. Uh, so it was all tied up, um, and then the decision maker, I don't know, I, I, there must have been some quick talking or tactical because it ended up, it was Damien and Steve, um, and I think I heard, uh, Summerfield chime in like, oh yeah, Dachman wants some of that, he jumped up and was like, yeah, let me get in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it was definitely designated for Went Hill Hill for captain's pick. And I had kind of pulled Matt aside and Steve aside, and I didn't really uh, speak with Mike as much, but I, I basically asked them because they were the people that I had in my head um, based on the way the whole thing had unfolded. Hey, one of you guys want to try and take control of this? And um, between after those conversations, it was decided that Steve was the best, best guy for the job. When it break, boils down to experience and a guy who's been there the most by, by far, it was Steve, and it just, I think, to put the confidence in him, I know for a fact that the game that he lost prior to that, he had had an eight ball to the nine ball that he rattled, and he was very frustrated, you could see it, but he had a chance to regain himself and recollect his emotions and so forth, and I just felt like it really was the best decision going forward, giving him that look for that last one single game. If I had to pick one guy to play Damien, in one game to decide the whole thing, it was going to be Steve in that moment. Well, Steve's been in pretty stressful. I mean, he just got done playing the one pop. Yeah, that's what I mean. His experience I mean, kind of seasoned. comes to the forefront of yeah. all of our players on that team, and it made the most sense. Yeah. Um, that was now, great. If he had been playing horrible the whole weekend or something like yeah. that, it would have been a much more difficult decision to make. But all in all, he played fairly well. I mean, he was, he was maybe not the top of his game, but he played well. And yeah. he was definitely the guy that I felt most confident with leaning on um, not to mention that any any of the guys couldn't have done it, but if I was going to gamble the whole weekend on one guy, I was going to put Steve out there. Well, and Steve, and I'd probably do it again, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to not. I mean, Steve's such a great season player, but I mean, he has some pretty awesome safeties. Oh, amazing in safety uh, play in the whole two sure. days. But, um, so that last match, I mean. Good Lord, that was stressful just watching it two weeks later. Oh, I was like, man. oh man, because I forgot kind of the ins and outs of it. And who would have thought that, you know, gaming being as strong as he is? Because I saw the two rail Z bank kick oh, and then man. kick to the two, cutting it down shots. all the way down to the corner. Yeah. Um, that with ball in hand would not run out that table. Yeah, we, I mean, you know, a lot of little fat, that was a $3,000 game. Yeah. We gave up ball in hand twice. Yeah. <laughs> twice. It's hard to, well, and that was just it, the initial kick. And we, and we won the game. Yeah. It's hard to. And that was leave. hill, 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 hill. Yeah. Again, for $3,000. You know, if that doesn't tell you what, what pressure is like, I mean, to say no offense to Damien and, and Steve, well, that's the point of my story. Yeah. Is, yeah, even at that level, Playing nine, nine ball so easy. We're all playing ten ball. Nine ball stupid. It, monkeys can play nine. Yeah. Playing nine ball on a nine foot table. Ball in hand twice. With small pockets. Wasn't representing for your three state. grand. I mean, if that yeah. don't matter, yeah. if that's not the time to play good. Yeah. yeah, that's how tough. That's how much pressure there is. Even yeah. when you are and you're talking player. that was at the thirteen yeah. hour mark. You yeah. know, they had been battling the grueling nature of that day, and then to put that on their shoulders, it was uh, it was a lot, and you know. It was there was it was good for the drama and good for the event, not good for my heart though. I tell you, it was uh, it was rough one. It's tough action, man. <laughs> well, the... Yeah, for the record, I did not want to play that game because I would have done the same oh. thing. <laughs> I'm much happier to be talking about them doing oh, that than talking about me doing when it. He was commentating with Kevin. Oh. Uh, Summerfield, Summerfield was like, I think Mike Dachman was Summerfield's pick for the captain's pick. That was what Summerfield was saying on the stream. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, I made some mistakes. I had my match against Liz. We would have won. We were at Hill Hill, and I missed a, like a two ball that I. Back. I remember that one. 
yeah, no, I no, and I, and we got to go with Steve. Steve's our 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 closest to true pro that we have yeah. on the team. There's no to me, there was nothing to talk about. It was Steve. Yeah, between Steve's uh, our pick. Uh, Matt was playing yeah. great at the moment, but yeah. it's still well, disrespectful to our all, highest Fargo player to to pick anybody else. To Matt, to I mean, Steve. in 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 the reality is, we would not have been where we were at without Matt because Matt won his last singles match. Yeah, MVP that Decisive. tied it up, that made, got us to that point, yeah. and he won his last single game that got us to Hill Hill. So both both of those things never would have happened if it wasn't for Matt's performance. So that was why I was like, hey Matt, you know, how are you feeling? We, we talked it out and we all agreed it was Steve. So it was, uh, he got it for it. He got us there, you know? And well, you that say? was a, a, an awesome choice, Captain, <laughs> because <laughs> well, uh, you guys- It was a team getting, choice, it wasn't just me. Well, you guys ended up getting it after a grueling two days um, representing Oregon. I know that Oregonians are happy to have the Cub back here in sure. Oregon, finally. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, that's a big deal. Um, so uh, the future of the Northwest Cup, uh, you're giving the reins to uh, he's the, Michael. He's the new captain. Uh, and any big plans? Like any, I mean, I, I don't want yes, to Yes, but you know how it is. Man. Everything's so, oh, you yeah, know how it is. Hush, hush. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, yeah we got, we're hoping to to expand upon what we're doing. Yeah, this is a great format and to do it once a year, you know, and we played Vegas a while ago. Yeah, that's, we need to do more than that. Yeah. Well, that's I what was, we're gonna do. I, I was talking to somebody down in Idaho not that long ago, I was kind of telling them about the Northwest Cup. I was like, man, why don't you guys get a team together? Mm -hmm. And uh, Rick Velasky, and uh, he, he was like, yeah, I mean we got some good players. I'm For like, sure. Yeah, I'd like to not? see. I'd like to see some Montana, Idaho players get some get involved. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, there's definitely talk of that. Well, here's the thing. What about Canada? Like different countries. Canadians. Like, I don't know, man. They keep coming down and winning all our tournaments. Should we really right? include these guys? I'm like they're good, darn it. They're yeah, good. Yeah. Um, well, but yeah, anybody with over 200 robustness, I mean, that's the... Well, I, as far as I know, and I'm not involved in the development of it, but I do believe Damien and, and Ed that there is a matchup happening between Team Washington and uh, a team from Canada. That would make so sense. I, I do believe that that's sense. happening, um, but you'll have to you'll have to talk with them about that because I don't know the You're details. You're going to have to travel and do an interview up there. Yeah. Uh, oh, cool. I get to see Damien, my buddy. Uh, so, uh, and Damien... Uh, Shot really strong. I know that he felt really bad uh, uh, representing Washington, but he played pretty strong. I mean, I don't. I don't oh, again, it goes great. back to the, it goes yeah. back to the thing of the pressure of the tournament. It's a long, grueling event, and you know, then you have everything fall on your shoulders. Uh, but on top of that, I mean, the guy's got a full time job. He's running. A, he's running an apparel company on the side. Yeah. I mean, he's got a family. He's like, there's a lot to ask, and then you know, I. I those both those guys, like I said, I'm glad it was Steve and Damien out there battling for that last yeah. game because that's a lot. You know, that was a lot to take on for both those guys. Um, so we, uh, we're quite a bit into this, but um, I, so just kind of wrapping up, and uh, because we we do want to do a tech review, um, that's uh, what we do uh, every week too. Because uh, poolcues.com, they, they were also. Uh, very gracious enough to um, let us try the new Predator Black Series. I know we were all looking at it. You were like, excuse me, you know, this thing is so beautiful. Nice. So we got the new uh, 9Ks. We got, uh, I think, one of two and two of three. Really? And, nice. and uh, um, we also have the Revo 12.9, the one that you're hitting with. Um, and then uh, we have the new McDermott with the variable uh, weight transfer system. It, I was reading, uh, reading up on it. Oh, good lord! Like mm. we're gonna, we're gonna show everybody where you take the rod out. You can adjust the weight, how much of the forward balance, back balance. You can uh, adjust uh, the entire weight of it. You just pull the whole pin out. And pretty exciting. Um, we're gonna review that here in a little bit. Um, so. When you take this over, is this going to be a twice a year kind of thing, or? Oh, that'd no, be the details I hate Cup, to get into. I'm the still, Northwest well, Cup the, is a whole well, Yeah, I, I'm still going to produce and and put the the show on, so to speak. I'm okay. just going to step back, and I'm really happy to step back and not do the captaining stuff because it'll make it a lot easier for me to do the production, right? Which is and big. which is which is why he can take over and he can worry about team practices. Yeah, and all Northwest that Cup stuff. is a bigger <laughs> production thing. Yeah. 
that, no, that, it, we're, you know. it's definitely going to be once a year. And like I said, we have a soft date. It's going to be at 15th Street on 2020 in September. Um, if anything, there might be a couple of tweaks where, and I, the decision hasn't really been fully made, but either we're going to do one of two things. Either we're going to start it on a Friday night, depending on the venue and mic, and do a couple features matches, kind of hype up the weekend, do some interviews, or we're going to reduce the race because the last thing I want, the one thing I learned, one of the big takeaways from this year was as much as I loved it, Hill Hill, it was not cool to have those players getting put on the highways so late at night and having people have to stay up so late. A lot of people washed up until they had to go to bed because they had to go to work the next day. We're going to make sure that's not the case next year. We're going to make sure it's over at a decent hour. Um, and so one of those things we might do is we might shorten the race or we might start on a Friday night, kind of depending on 15th Street's availability. But Northwest Cup is going to remain on nine foot tables. It's going to be a once a year thing. And it's going to, I'm going to try to continue to have it be the elite of the elite, the best players kind of represented. Um, and, and more or less because I do, as you and we've discussed before the podcast, intentions of making more events for more players to be involved. And that's really the end game is that we love this format. We love what, you know, what it, every, as a player, I want to play in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the more of these we can put together, um, the better for our pool community. And it might as well. I mean, the, the more the merrier. It's just, it's a lot of fun to be a part of. Well, I, and it, so uh, we were talking before the podcast. We're going to do a Eugene against Portland. I'm not going to speak on the whole format. But there's going to be some one pocket. It's going to be five on five, Portland against Eugene. Uh, and uh, but so I'm going to get a flyer together, and our next podcast will be on the flyer. Um, and. Uh, there's already some mess talking going yeah, on. Yeah, for sure. And some Fargo, right. uh, like, oh, you guys are here. And um, so, but I think that, Matt, the great thing is like we were talking, it's like, man, you know, if we all work together in the pool community, Sherry Ross uh, and Kevin, uh, but Sherry Ross and was Real kind of saying on Pit Real Birds, which mm -hmm. they do an awesome job of streaming a lot of events and uh, they're not really in it to make to get rich, but they're helping to promote pool because Grow the Sherry's pool a pool player Absolutely. too. She plays in tournaments. Mm -hmm. um, when we all work together, especially here in Oregon, I mean, it's prime time with this new pool place uh, getting built in Beaverton. Legends. Cannot wait. Legends. Cannot wait. Um, but awesome. if we all work together, um, man, we can make pool really big. Oh, I think it, we're, we, we were seeing it before our eyes. It, there's an uptick. There's a lot of positive stuff happening. And um, again, like to sort of piggyback off of some of the stuff in the desert, the, the Northwest Cup uh, was the first thing. Now I, I want to do what I'm going to call the Douglas Cup, which will be another cup type event. Um, trying to formulate teams right now. I've been yeah. reaching out to people to form teams. So we got a couple captains already, a couple commitments. Same thing in Washington. I've reached out to a couple of people. I'll make some more formal announcements when we have all the specific details and dates. But there's going to be the Rainier Cup up there. And the idea is, you know, this first year, just like the Northwest Cup, kind of handpick these teams, get the event off the ground, and then make it a way for all the players out in our area to get involved and one day be able to participate. Because that's really what we're trying to do. Like you said, it's a community grassroots thing. Just improving our pool scene, just improving our pool community, and that's what we're doing with one event at a time. Yeah, I would say since we've begun this, we've had people saying, how can I have a team? Right. How do I get on the team? I want to be involved. Why are you guys the team? Yeah, who made you To be happen? honest, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, we, we, need to, we need additional yep. teams because there should be Salem and Douglas County, and that yeah. makes per – and Portland's real big. Maybe there's two. Uh, yeah. It makes sense. These are legitimate questions, and we well, should have more people involved. And yeah. lower rated players and players of all ratings, you know, yeah. that where they can, they're tuning in, they're supporting this. We're definitely with this new room opening up out in Beaverton, we're going to have a lot more flexibility to do a lot more events. Um, and that's what's so exciting about having Savage Billiards come up and about and you guys and what you're doing with your production. I mean, I just, it's, there's a lot of, the sky's kind of the limit right now and it's really exciting time. And I'm just glad that we're all kind of coming together at the same time. And it couldn't be better timing for, uh, Michael Bean out there. I mean, in yeah. terms of opening that room, that's just amazing. Oh, yeah. Amazing timing. Well, I, and I, and I, I think uh, being an owner, um, 
uh, uh, along with Tony and uh, Dana Dunlop and my wife and Dave Guerrero owning South Billiard Apparel. Um, it, we are pretty excited about the future of Pool 2 being on the apparel side of it. But I mean, we, we're just trying to help promote Pool 2 and Savage Streaming Productions. Um, we wanted to go a different route because, you know, Rail Birds, Rail the Rail, Bad Boys, they all kind of pretty much got it covered with the streaming mm -hmm. pool tournaments uh, because Kevin and Sherry, they do a great job, Rail Birds. But uh, th I think this kind of helps promote pool, this podcast. We can get information. Information is good in pool. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that Northwest uh, or what you were just talking about, mm -hmm. the up and coming events, um, when can we kind of start seeing that? There's definitely going to be um, announcements probably later this next week. I have a couple people I'm waiting to speak with probably later today. There's some uh, a gentleman down south in Medford who I'm trying to have uh, put a team together. Um, I've got some, um, I've got Stephen Weekly committed up in Spokane for a Spokane team. And I'm trying to work with wow. a few other people so that we can get Right now, I'm really shooting for four teams for the Douglas Cup and the Rainier Cup, and they're basically the individual state cups, whereas in the idea that came from the Seguro Cup, where it was basically East and West Phoenix battling each other down in the desert, and I yeah. thought, well, let's get as many players involved and try and make it more territories. Um, and in this first year, frankly, it's not going to be specific to territory. I just want to get four teams going and get this kind of thing off the ground, and then we can move from there, you know, move forward. Um, but yeah, I, I can't really give any more details right now yeah. until we get yeah, we get the specific dates. I know this. I know that I did ask Michael if he would be interested in hosting. So I do believe the finals of the first Douglas Cup will take place out at Legends. So uh, I don't know the exact dates, but I do believe that will will happen. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, that that I'm. That'd be really exciting. I, I, it's upcoming, right? Yes, yes. We're not, you know, it's not 2022. No, no, no. This yeah, Douglas I mean, Cup is happening this year. It's just a matter. And right now, I'm looking at having the like a weekend in October. It's that's the trickiest part is that because of all this good stuff going on, it's pretty crowded. When you look at the calendar, there's all these weekends that are being taken for either you know whether it's APA or or BCA and some of these other tournaments. Um, you know, 15th Street's got so much stuff going. I know Colby's is going to have stuff going on. So it's a matter of finding those weekends that actually you can get 10 people to agree on being someplace and battling it out. But that's the one thing that I am going to do different. Douglas Cup, Rainier Cup, all of those events are going to be one day events. They're going to be sprints. It's going to be similar format, but it'll be one day and it will be bar box challenge matches. It will not be nine footers. So that's going to yeah. open it up a little bit more because there's a lot more bar boxes out there. So, well, um, I, I, it, all of it sounds exciting, um, and uh, I really, on behalf of Sound Streaming Productions, because I know you guys are busy, it's a beautiful day outside, mm. um, which uh, we've only been around uh, about a month, but we wanted to do something kind of different, Ray Cunningham, Tracy Cunningham, Tony Dunlop, and his uh, beautiful wife, Dana Dunlop, and myself, uh, owning Sound Streaming. Uh, we just want to thank all the people that are involved in pool. Michael Dyshman, Steve Wimmelbach with uh, uh, Beagle, um, Beagle, Beagle Box, Beagle Box. Yeah. Uh, Sherry Ross and Kevin with Rel, <coughs> excuse me, Rel Birds, yeah. uh, Damien um, with uh, Jam Up. You know, I think we're all in it not yeah. to get rich. Um, and we're all just trying to promote pool because we're all pool players. Right? Yeah, and that's what it <laughs> comes down to. I, I want to say special thanks real quick to Sam Rubito and David Scar for your help at the Northwest Cup. It would not have been the same event without you guys. I really appreciate you so much and thank you for your time. Uh, that was pretty spectacular. And also, um, David Ringler and Jesse Bergman, what you guys are doing up north. I mean, I hope that uh, we, can, just, Jesse. we yeah. can only emulate that down here with this new room opening and, and start to do more of that stuff. But big props to you guys because everything you're doing is great for our community. Definitely. I appreciate your time. That was awesome. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I just want to give shout outs to everybody out there like uh, Sophia Tran who promotes. She's uh, doing a bunch yeah. too. Yeah. yeah so Sophia's doing a whole lot of stuff. Um, she's doing big stuff out there too and you're doing uh, a lot of stuff for a pool out there too promoting and uh, being also a full-time dad so um, you're doing a lot for pool too so it's pretty exciting times i think pool is kind of heading in a different direction right now yeah um, a lot of the working class a lot of the working force is 
going out there and playing some pool. So this, well, is the, even, this is the strongest I've ever seen in the, the, the Pacific yeah. Northwest pool community. This is the strongest and most tight, and divide, tight knit I've ever skill, seen us. Yeah. I think the internet, Facebook has helped. I think a lot of mm -hmm. things have factored in. Uh, well, it's just yeah. even when you look at Matchroom, CSI, Bad Boys, some of these bigger players, like they're just, they're doing neat stuff too. It's like definitely there's been this shift right. and, it, and it feels like, man, we're riding a wave right now that who knows where it's going to end up, but it seems to be all on an uptick and it's very positive. Which is a it's a brighter outlook than ever before. Yeah. Um, but like some of the stuff we talked about, man, it's, it couldn't be more exciting. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, like, I don't want to give. Yeah, we got we got Yeah, <laughs> that's for right a future <laughs> podcast. But yeah, uh, I, I just want to thank you guys for everything that you guys do for Pool Big Earn Dan Wolf and Thanks. all of your group um, and Mike for coming out. Um, you, you guys are awesome. You guys play great. Uh, you, you represent you. Oregon um, strong. I mean. Um, Thank you. Yeah, thanks for hey, having thanks us. Thanks for everything. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. Great. Right. Appreciate you too, man. Thank appreciate you. Man. Appreciate you, Matt. Uh, thanks, so Matt. hold on. Uh, we're going to take a little break, and we're going to do the tech reviews on the Predator Black. Um, uh, it, whoever wants to stick around can try it out with oh, us. Um, uh, we have the McDermott iPro Carbon uh, Hybrid Shaft, and uh, we're going to take like a couple minute break and set up for that. And, Thank you guys for coming out. Appreciate well, thank you. you. Thanks Very for cool. tuning in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.